Shalom, everyone. It's good to be here with you again. And uh, some of you may be wondering, where is my buddy, Rabbi Highland Slobotkin? Well, this week, we're having a, an honest talk about COVID, part two. And Rabbi Highland and his wonderful wife, Rita, are kind of laid out suffering from COVID right now. I just communicated with him last evening and he has a, a temperature, feels very lethargic, bit of a cough, and uh, yet he's full of faith, optimistic, and uh, we trust that God's uh, grace will bring him fully around and that he'll be back with us next week. And I know many of you uh, are struggling with COVID or you have loved ones that are struggling with COVID at this time. And I think we all know people who uh, not only are struggling with COVID but other life threatening or, or challenging diseases. And I have a number of people on my heart during this season, good friends and uh, a number of acquaintances as well that I'm concerned about that are either fighting COVID or fighting some kind of life-threatening disease like cancer. And so I just wanna open up this episode with prayer. And uh, as I pray, I wanna to suggest to you for uh, those that are close to you, your loved ones, friends, acquaintances that are on your heart that are either fighting COVID or another a difficult disease or a life-threatening situation that you would bring them up before the Lord as we pray together. So I'm going to pray for Rabbi Hyland and, and uh, name a few others quietly to myself. And as I name people quietly to myself, you can also do the same if you would like. Avinu Malkenu, our great God and our great King, as I look behind me at the uh, uh, photo of the Himalayan mountains, I'm reminded that as majestic as the Himalayas are, and so much of your creation is, you are so much beyond. You are so much more majestic, so much more awesome than the Himalayas or anything else, because you are the creator of all of it. And Lord God, we know that you are good and your mercy endures forever. And we are so grateful for those of us who know Messiah Yeshua, for those of us who, who have come to know that he died for our sins and rose from the dead, and he made this amazing sacrifice for us because you, Abba, love us so much. You love each and every one of us, Jews, Gentiles, rich and poor. And we are so grateful, Lord, that you care. You are not the author of sickness and disease. You are not the author of evil. You are the author of truth, goodness, life, life to its fullness, and eternal life. And so we come to you today in the name of Yeshua, in the authority of Yeshua, and we ask that you would stretch out your merciful and powerful and gracious loving hand and heal Rabbi Hyland and his wife, Rita. And Lord, we're going to take just a, a, about a half a minute, and we each are going to name other people before you that are on our hearts that we want to see totally restored and in health. Lord, we thank you for those of us who are followers of you, Yeshua. We know that you told us in this world we would have surus, troubles, and trials. But you also told us that you would be with us and that you are greater than all of our surus and troubles so that we can take heart and have joy each even in the midst of the greatest of trials. 
And Lord, my 44 years, I just want to testify before you and before everyone under the sound of my voice, my 44 years in being your follower and believing in you has proven that to be true. In every trial and every difficult circumstance, I've experienced you leading, guiding, and helping in one way or another. Sometimes it was hard to find that lead, that guide, that help at the beginning, but eventually we, I saw your hand, and I saw your love, and I saw your kindness. Thank you so much that you never leave us or forsake us. We bless you in the name of Yeshua. You know, we all go through trials, uh, some of us very great trials, and my heart goes out to each and every one that's going through difficult times now. But I'm reminded of that story, uh, many of you know it, the footprints in the sand. You remember, there were the two footprints in the sand, two people walking together. And then uh, this symbolized Yeshua walking together with one of his followers. And then there was a difficult time in life, and it looked like there was only one footprint in the sand. And uh, the person asked the Lord, where were you when I was going through this difficult time? And the Lord spoke back to him, there was only one set of footprints in the sand because I was carrying you at that time. And so let us put our trust in the Lord who loves us. Life is full of difficult things, confusing things, but we can trust him. And Rabbi Hyland, we trust, in case you're listening today, that you're going to be back with us next week, fully healed and recovered, both you and Rita, and all the other people look, uh, that we prayed for, uh, both me silently and uh, all of those that are watching and listening. Lord, we're just trusting that uh, you're going to reach out your loving hand to touch them, guide doctors, provide the uh, whatever they need to be fully restored. Amen, amen, amen. So, Okay, so we're back here to have uh, an honest discussion on COVID, and we, we just uh, honestly discussed the fact that uh, my dear friend Rabbi Highland is fighting off COVID along with his wife. And uh, uh, before I dig into that, I want to mention, uh, this is very important to me, it's uh, Sanctity of Human Life Month. January is Sanctity of Human Life Month. And uh, I, I would just like to remind everyone that January 23rd this year is Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. So I want to encourage all Messianic Jewish congregations and all churches to dedicate some time uh, this Saturday, this Sunday, Dedicate some time in your service to pray and to speak of the sanctity of human life from conception to the grave. And of course, when we talk about sanctity of human life month and sanctity of human life Sunday, we're primarily talking about the great abortion deception and the great abortion tragedy that we have in America and around the world. January 22nd, 1973 was the day of the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision that legalized abortion. And did you know that more than 61 million babies in the USA have died in their mother's womb since? And the WHO points out that 40 to 50 million babies worldwide annually have their lives ended in their mother's wombs by abortion. That's 125,000 babies daily. Daily. Can you imagine this? 125,000 babies, preborn children beautiful gifts from God, their lives ended, ending brutally in their mother's wombs by the abortionist's hand. 
in their mother's wombs where they should be safe and secure as God designed it. Uh, some of you may know that uh, when I lived in upstate New York, I was the founding director of a network of care net pregnancy care centers. They were called crisis pregnancy centers back then, today called care net pregnancy care centers. And uh, God just gave me such a burden to see mothers and fathers, as well as their unborn children, spared from the tragedy of abortion. And I pray, and I hope you will join me in praying that this year, 2022, in the United States of America, that Roe versus Wade will be overturned in the Supreme Court. And there's a great opportunity to see that happen based upon the case that the Supreme Court is, has already heard oral arguments on and is entertaining at, uh, during this season. So let's be praying about this and let us also refocus ourselves and give ourselves to compassionate and prayerful action. You know, you may not realize this, but one report said, even with all the deaths of COVID in the past year, in 221, there were more people, more human beings, more people that died as a result of abortion than any other cause in 2021. So let's really be praying and giving ourselves compassionately to see an end to this tragic deception. I'm not going to spend the whole episode on this. I just want to turn your attention to two Your Jewish Connection episodes that I did on the great abortion deception. You can find those episodes, and I went into a lot more detail there uh, than I will today. You can find those episodes on reachii.org, our website, Reach Initiative International, R-E-A-C-H-I-I dot org, and you can find those two episodes on the great abortion deception. And if you're not, if you're not educated on this tragedy and this great deception, then I really want to encourage you to watch or listen to those two episodes. They're available in video and audio and uh, share it with others that need to be educated. Uh, but I wanna share one last thought because this is so moving before we talk a little bit more about uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. It was on the 10th anniversary of the Roe versus Wade decision that our president, Ronald Reagan, wrote an essay about abortion that was published in the Human Life Review and later issued a book entitled Abortion and the Conscience of the Nation. Uh, he wrote this, and it's so moving. The real question today is not when human life begins, but what is the value of human life, President Reagan wrote. The abortionist, he went on to say, the abortionist who reassembles the arms and legs of a tiny baby to make sure all its parts have been torn from its mother's body can hardly doubt whether it is a human being. The real question for him and for all of us is whether that tiny human life has a God-given right to be protected by the law, the same right we have. He went on to say, I have often said we need to join in prayer to bring protection to the unborn, and let's do that like never before in 2022. And then he added exactly what CareNet pregnancy care centers are about. Prayer and action, compassionate action, I add, are needed to uphold the sanctity of human life. I believe, again, this is Ronald Reagan, I'm quoting, it will not be possible to accomplish our work, the work of saving lives, without being a soul of prayer. So let's receive his exhortation and let's really give ourselves to that. And I want to encourage you also to go to the CareNet website. There are many wonderful free 
uh, resources there, CareNet, uh, CareNet Pregnancy Care Centers. Go to their website, educate yourself, and uh, I hope all Messianic congregations and churches will dedicate some time at their service this week, uh, this weekend to the sanctity of human life for the sake of the unborn and their parents, parents who are deceived into taking the lives of their unborn children by abortion. Okay, let's have a quick word of prayer on that. And uh, then we'll uh, spend the last uh, uh, minutes of this episode completing uh, or taking our next steps in the discussion of COVID-19. Avinu Malkenu, our great God and our great King. The unborn child is a human being, a heartbeat at 42 days. I mean, as Ronald Reagan said, when the abortion puts together all the body parts that have been abortionists have put together all the body parts that they have torn apart, they have no doubt that this is a human being. Father God, we pray for all the mothers and fathers that have already aborted their children. We pray that they would find healing from you. When they realize what they have done, they would, they would uh, find forgiveness from you, forgive themselves, and find healing from you. And from all that might be considering abortion now, we pray, Lord God, that uh, they would find a care net pregnancy care center or a similar type compassionate ministry that will give them an ultrasound for free to show them their living baby, their beautiful gift from God, their beautiful child, and that they would turn from abortion. And Lord, we pray that in this nation, that we would take the lead around the world again, and Roe versus Wade would be overturned, and that abortion on demand would no longer be uh, uh, considered a human right. It would be considered the taking of an innocent life. And we pray that truth dispels deception and the unborn child, the preborn child would be protected by the laws of America and the laws of every nation under heaven. And that people would understand that these children are a gift from God. And even though there's no easy answer to an unplanned or difficult pregnancy, abortion is not a primary choice for anyone. Lord God, may it be the rare, rare, rare exception. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. We are hopeful that in 222, we're going to see a great reversal of this abortion plague in America and around the world. Thank you again in Yeshua's name. Okay, we're going to take uh, the last segment of this episode to pick up where we were last time. We were, uh, as is our custom, we're not primarily looking to make a political statement. We're primarily looking to give helpful information regarding COVID-19, but even more so a biblical and spiritual perspective that we hope will be uh, a source of strength and encouragement to you. And last week, uh, we shared that uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, I asked the Lord, but Lord, where are you? What are you doing? What are you trying to accomplish through this, through this tragic pandemic seeking the earth? And I, we're not addressing whether God is the author, whether he's allowing it, uh, whether it's a plague, whether it's from the devil. That's not my purpose here. But Lord, in the midst of this, it exists. What are you doing? Where are you at? And we, we are uh, going to repeat the first three points briefly and then go into four and five. I, I believe from the beginning of the pandemic, the Lord showed me that he is definitely doing these five things. And I'm not saying it's a complete list, but I think it's a very important list of five things that I believe God is doing in the midst of this pandemic. And the first one that we covered last week was this. If you are a born-again follower of Yeshua, God wants to affirm and confirm during this pandemic that he is in you, that he is with you, 
that he is for you and that he is there to comfort you, strengthen you, and help you in any way that he might deem is helpful. And I know we've all lost people that we love, and that's heartbreaking. And sometimes we didn't get the answer to prayer that we were hoping for. But nevertheless, if you're a follower of Yeshua, you know that God is with you. He wants to affirm that. He's for you. And you not only have life here on the Olam Haba, but you have life forevermore in his presence in the Olam Hazer. And I trust, dear friends who knew Yeshua, who we lost in these past two years, they are now rejoicing, fully healed in the presence of God. So that was number one. Number two, he is awakening, calling to repentance, born again followers of Yeshua that are living in compromise, that are lukewarm, that have made even good things like a good job, career, family, uh, having a nice home or car. These things have become idols in your life. God is calling you to repentance and to return to make him and his kingdom, number one, front and center, first priority in your life. And so I want to encourage you, if you are one of those people that are lukewarm, or you're compromising with sin, or something has taken first place over God, even good things like family, uh, that, that you would repent of this and return to God, because I want you to know, and God wants you to know even more, that everything that is important to you in life is better when God is first and center. When he's the center of our lives and we seek first him and his kingdom, out of us flow life more fully, more better. We're wiser, we're better, we're better husbands, we're better wives, better parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Number three that we're moving on to, and we covered this very briefly last week, God is calling his followers, followers of Yeshua, to be lights in this darkness, to love and serve sacrificially, and to proclaim in word and deed his good news, his love. And I want to read a scripture from you that really says it all, and I'm reading from a paraphrased version of the Bible called the, Mes the Message, but it just tells it so beautifully. Let me read this to you from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. This is Yeshua speaking. He's speaking to our hearts today, and I need to hear this over and over again, and I'm imagining you're like me. You do as well. Let me tell you why you are here, Yeshua speaking. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Ooh. Here's another way to put it. We're going into verse 14 now, and we'll conclude with verse 16, Yeshua speaking. Matthew chapter 5. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the guard colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If, you, if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a landstand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a land stand, shine. Keep open house to others. You'll prompt people to open up to God, your generous Father in heaven. And I can only say, Lord, make me better salt. Make us better salt. And help me to shine even brighter and brighter throughout this new year and help us all to shine brighter and brighter throughout this new year, because we know so many are losing hope, so many are lo lost in darkness, so many are lost in sin. So that's number three. 
Number four, we're talking about five things I believe that God showed me that he's doing in the midst of this pandemic. Not meant to be a complete list, but important things. Number four, he is in calling the entire world to recognize that we are not in control. We are not the most competent and the most powerful. We have never been in control. We are weak. We are broken as a uh, human race. And uh, we need to understand that God, God is powerful. He is God in heaven and in earth. And he desires, of course, he gave man free will. He does not control what we do. We choose good or evil. So I don't believe God's in control in that way. But we need to understand that we cannot even generate our next breath. We did not create our own life. We cannot generate our next breath. God gave this to us as a gift. And as we see the great confusion and division as governments try to solve uh, this COVID pandemic, we see how they are failing <laughs> one time after another. Now, you have to understand, I am not against vaccines. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm not a pro-vaxxer. I believe everyone should make a decision for themselves. But I also understand that the government is trying to convince us that this is the only way that we're going to take care of COVID. And uh, I think we all have come to the conclusion, or most of us, that uh, that's a pretty confused way of thinking about it. Science doesn't bear that out, and neither does our practical experience of the past two years. And that is why the Lord spoke in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39 and 40. He said, acknowledge and take to heart this day that the Lord is God in heaven above and on the earth. There is no other. Keep his decrees and commands, which I am giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land the Lord your God gives you for all time. God spoke this to the children of Israel through Moses, but these words are as important for us and government leaders to hear to this day. You know, Going back to the abortion issue, Ronald Reagan declared uh, a Sunday each month, uh, each Sunday, one Sunday in January every year he was president, as did President Bush, as did President uh, uh, Trump, Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. All of these presidents did, but our present president, who claims to be a Catholic in the Catholic Church, has a very pro-life stand has not made this declaration, President Joe Biden. Mr. Biden, you need to repent of your rebellion against God. And I declare that every leader that is walking in their pride and in thinking they know better than the God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel, the God of all people, you need to repent. You need to get on your knees and then perhaps you will have some wisdom to govern your people in truth and compassion and have greater wisdom to deal with this COVID pandemic. And uh, as I mentioned, we're not, po politics and political statements is not the main purpose of this uh, uh, Facebook Live that we do every Wednesday, 5 Eastern to Pacific time. We want to give a biblical and spiritual perspective on things, and we want to bring you practical help. And I just want to share with you, when I battled COVID in November, uh, I ended up having, I mentioned this last week, I ended up having a pretty easy time of it. And uh, I'm just, just going to tell you the things that I think helped me have an easy time of it. And you may not agree, you may disagree, you may agree, and that's fine. All I want to do is put it out to you and let you know. I think it was very helpful to me to lean upon God. It was very helpful to me to invite his presence into my life 
and to kind of lean on him, so to speak, during my COVID battle. I think it was very helpful that many were praying for me. I think it was very helpful that at the beginning of the COVID pandemic, I made a decision uh, to get in good shape. And uh, I made efforts in that regard over the past couple of years to get into better shape. I also made a decision to build up my immune system and to take uh, to eat a diet that would help me to build up my immune system and to take supplements that uh, built up my immune system. I also made a decision that when I went into risky environments where I had a greater chance of catching COVID, I prepared myself ahead of time and uh, uh, was taking, I didn't mention the word last week because I don't want them to censor me, but I don't think they will. I was taking ivermectin and uh, I follow the protocols. I followed them before COVID and I followed them during COVID uh, when I fought COVID. I had an easy time of it. I followed the protocols of the Frontlines Critical Care Alliance. And they have wonderful protocols from my point of view. Uh, you can examine them. Some of you may think they're nonsense. Some of you might find them to be very helpful. Make a decision for yourself. You can find their, their research. Their, these these, these uh, people in this alliance, they are not into politics. They are people who are caring for COVID patients in America and around the world and they are sharing research as well as their own experience in helping COVID patients. So you can find out about their protocols. I followed it. Uh, I had a rough time for one day and uh, most of my symptoms were gone five days. Yes, I was vaccinated. Uh, um, and I imagine that was helpful in making my situation uh, less serious. And I also did get monoclonal antibodies, which, you know, at that time was available to me uh, at my age. But these protocols, in addition to the other things I already mentioned, I believe helped me. And I believe ivermectin helped me. And so you can find that at uh, COVID19criticalcare.com. I'm going to spell it C O V I D 1 9 C R I T. T-I-C-A-L-C-A-R-E dot com, COVID-19 critical care dot com. These are physicians that treat COVID research. They present a lot of research for what they're talking about, their protocols. And so if uh, you think uh, you'd like to explore that, you can do that on this website. Again, we're just trying to be helpful. I don't have an agenda. Um, just sharing my own experience and in my own studies and uh, the experience of quite a few others, they found this helpful. Is ivermectin like a, an iron shield around you? And are these protocols an iron shield around you to keep you from getting COVID? No. Do they help you, maybe prevent you from getting COVID or getting a serious COVID case? I think so. Make decisions for yourself, be educated, be prepared. COVID continues to spread. We all hope that this Omicron variant is the beginning of the end and uh, that by the spring, we can all go back to a much more normal everyday routine in life. But let's not go back to the status quo spiritually. Let's go to a new normal spiritually, new heights, new depths, of walking in the love, the supernatural love and mercy of God, new heights and new depths of trusting him, new heights and new depths of loving people into the kingdom of God and serving sacrificially. And may you and your loved ones be abundantly, overwhelmingly blessed in this new year with the presence of God and may May his goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. Thank you for tuning in. We'll be here again next week. Uh, you can find the recordings on uh, the Reach Initiative International Facebook, and we'll post the uh, websites there too, uh, both for CareNet and for, 
for the uh, COVID Critical Care Alliance for those protocols. Uh, and you can find it on the Beit Tikva Messianic Jewish Congregation Seattle Facebook page, the recordings. You can also find the recordings on reach, R-E-A-C-H-I-I dot org, Reach Initiative International website, and also our YouTube channel. Okay, until next week, make the Lord your priority and uh, may his kingdom just expand in you and through you. See you next week on our next Facebook Live. Shalom, shalom.